In this lecture, you'll be learning how to create a SQL Server RDS database within AWS. Amazon Web Services provides a free tier for you to utilize and get a feel of many of its services. So you have three types of offering available. You have the free trials, 12 months free, and the always free tier. If you scroll down and select 12 months free, then you'll see the list of resources that are available for 12 months. If you check always free, then you'll see a list of resources that are always free. So I'll be selecting 12 months free. Now under the RDS databases, under the free tier, under the RDS database free tier, you have 750 hours available for you to use. And this is for MySQL, Postgres, or your DB or SQL Server. If you look carefully, if you look carefully, there are a few restrictions in terms of what you can use when you're creating the database. So for example, you have a db.t2 micro db class, the db.t3 micro db class, and the db.t4 micro class. So when you're creating the SQL Server, if you want to utilize a free tier, you have to utilize one of these options. So I already have an account, so I'm going to sign in. Once you're signed in, your console home will be empty. However, we want to get to the RDS console page. So from the search option, you can search for RDS. Then select RDS. Select Create Database. Select Microsoft SQL Server. And then select Easy Create. This will allow you to select the free tier. However, for this course, I will not be utilizing the free tier because I want to complete the training using a higher version of SQL Server. With the free tier, you can't utilize the latest version of SQL Server. So I'm going to select Standard Create. For the database management type, it's Amazon RDS. For the SQL Server Edition, I'll be utilizing Standard. In upcoming modules, for the SQL Server Engine, I'm going to select the latest build. And for the template, I'm going to select Dev Test. The DB Instance Identifier is used to uniquely identify your database instance. So I'm going to give it a name. And for the credentials, I'm going to keep the default as admin. For the master password, you can specify your own password or select auto generate a password. For the DB instance class, I'm going to select the smallest one, which is DBM5. For the storage type, I'm going to go with the general purpose SSD. The allocated storage is the size that you want your database to be. I'm going to keep it the smallest, which is 20 gigabytes. I don't want to enable auto scaling, so I'm going to uncheck this. And for high availability and durability, I'm going to select no because I don't want to always on or mirroring enabled. For the virtual private cloud, I'll be keeping the default. And if you're creating an instance for the first time, these will be automatically created for you. I'm going to enable public access because I don't have a side-to-side -side VPN in place. For the VPC security group settings, for the VPC security group, I'm going to choose existing. In your case, a default one will be created for you. For the availability zone, I'm going to select US East dashed away. I am not going to enable Windows authentication because my Active Directory is not configured. For performance in sight, I'm going to turn off the performance in sight because I don't want to utilize my free 7 days as yet. Expand additional configuration. You will see the default parameter groups and the default option group. In upcoming lectures, you'll learn more about the parameter group and the option group. So by default, the backup retention period is 7 days and it goes up to a maximum of 35 days. So I don't want to enable automated backups just yet and I'm going to disable encryption for now. For log exports, you can choose to publish your logs to Amazon CloudWatch logs. Amazon CloudWatch is used for monitoring, which you'll learn more about later on in this course. For your maintenance window, you can keep the no preference or you can choose a window when you want your maintenance to take place. So I'm going to select no preference for now. And for deletion protection, the deletion protection will protect your database from being accidentally deleted. At the end of the page, you'll see an estimated cost the database instance will cost you for the month. However, if you selected the free tier, you should be seeing a total cost of zero. Once you are satisfied with your configuration, select create database. 
So the database creation is currently in progress. While your database is being created, it's important that you view your credentials if you did not enter it manually and then you save your credentials. The database is now available and we can select the database instance. On this page, you see an overview of the database. The database identifier, the CPU utilization, current connectivity, status, the engine that you are running, the database class and region. On the connectivity and security tab, you want to ensure that publicly accessible is set to yes. This is the endpoint that you'll be using to connect to the database and this is the port. In the next lecture, we'll be taking a look at installing SQL Server Management Studio.